Uh, we're going to do a big change up from what you've been seeing in some of our fishing videos. We're fishing the creeks, we're fishing small water, and we're fishing for lake run brown trout. Who knows, we might get a rainbow or steelhead mixed in with these things. And as you can tell, it's getting mid November and we got wonderful weather. It's actually snowing on us at the moment. And it's cold. So we're going to have to see what's going on because we're definitely going to be dealing with cranky fish today. But follow along, let's see what we can find. And as always, if you recognize where we're fishing, please don't say anything. Because I ain't saying where we are, and I'm going to try not to give away anything. And please, out of respect for the resource and the people that depend on these areas to fish, keep it, keep it quiet when you recognize it. Because you know, I know, we're not giving away anything, so let's not give anything away. But anyways, follow along. Um, I'll talk about a little bit through the day what we're doing, how we're fishing, techniques we're using, and hopefully we'll catch a couple fish. I know Eric, where is he? There, there we go. Um, yeah, it's hard to point looking at He's working on it right now, trying to get me one. And I got Dave up top above. He's with us today. And so we're going to see if we can't get a couple fish on the, on the video. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm going through that thing. I don't carry egg sacks, I carry egg patterns. I don't know, maybe this comes on in heading being cheap with the Ziplocs. Over the last few days, or several days, we've been trying a whole variety of different patterns in this clear water. Even though we keep experimenting, keep trying, we always end up going back to the same old pattern. Here, That's, we're still in spawning time with these brown trout, so it's still a big, big egg bite. And it's those nuclear row bugs. I got a little fly time video up. I'll try to link to the to the video and how I tie these things. Real simple egg pattern. Keep it simple. It seems to be working. At least it has been for the last few days. We'll see how it works today. Nice fish, man. Whew. You know, you're ready, Dave. Nuclear roll bug and Oregon cheese. I don't think you haven't had your hands in there that long. Well, they're already starting to get chilly. <laughs> it's uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not 
uncomfortable. I'm gonna send her on its way. Come on his way. See you, buddy. probably noticed there you've seen us change uh, a couple locations a couple of times you might have even seen it snow but just a little update we are it's cold and snowy obviously and it's windy obviously but we've had to move through a lot of water to find find a couple of fish so we're just kind of beating through this stuff dealing with the wind and, and trying to deal with these crabby fish they're not any more happy about the weather than we are the cold than we are so we're just kind of beating through it, trying to make the best of it. So far, all of our little nips and drops have all come from the, pretty much the same thing, little Oregon cheese road bug. They're definitely not interested in a swing and fly, so everything has to be a drift. Everything has to be slow, and unfortunately we've even had to break out the evil floats, aka I call them drift management devices, just to try to slow the drift down keep it in where the fish are and keep our flies out of the debris in the bottom. These fish are right now just laying really tight. <laughs> yeah, no pressure cameras on you. It's all right. Okay. Hold it. That's a good one. Steve, we're going to need a net, guys. We're going to need a net now. This is definitely a, a net. No, it ain't. Just big. Just big. That's a nice, that's a nice egg one. That's a big fish. Here, lift up the net. Okay. We're getting there. <laughs> Man, this thing is just impressive. I'm done. Yeah, way, way, way. Put it in. Woo! Water cold? Woo! 
<laughs> nice fish. Oh. You want me to go? Work with me. Here you are, I'm gonna net it up. Well, this is kind of a day two of our run around the creeks and trying to find some brown trout. Yesterday was cold, windy. Today it's cold. We're, it's actually below freezing, so we're gonna probably be chipping a little ice. You know, the water temperature's been dropping, so the fish are really crabby. But we're gonna fish some pools and see if we can't find a few fish in here. Maybe this afternoon, some of these fish will move up into the runs and we can do a little sight fishing, maybe just fish the runs, maybe find some active fish up in there. But right now it's cold. Uh, the sun's out, the wind ain't howling, thank goodness. We'll see if we can't get something going. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to go over the, the um, egg drifting techniques that we're, we're using here today. It's cold. You might even see a few snowflakes in the air right now. It's below freezing. As a result, a lot of these fish are sliding into winter water, and they're dealing with a thermal shock, so we've got to slow our drift down, and we've got to be pretty precise. So as a result... We're going to be actually working with an indicator. I know it's here somewhere. I refer to them as um, drift management devices. And this is in a case where you can see how I'm going to use it to manage my drift, keep my fly into a slot. The other thing is you can you'll note is, is we're fishing a cut up against the bank. So we're fishing over slow water into fast water. And in this situation, it's going to definitely dictate how we're going to handle the line. One thing about this type of you know, as many of you know, fishing. The water you're in dictates how you handle your line to make a good presentation. So here, we're fishing over slow water into fast water, and it's going to require a little bit different line handling. It's nothing too expensive. So I'm going to start the presentation out by casting up to about 11 o'clock. I'm going to let the stuff to catch up with me. I got a little bit of a downstream mend. I don't like that, so I'll mend that out with an upstream. Now we're going into the slow water. I'll put a downstream mend. I got to mend the line down because the float or we're fishing is moving faster than the line laying over the slow water. So it's going to be a series of downstream mends. Once it kind of swings out, and there's always a bit of a swing even with an indicator, when it drifts out of the faster water into the slower water, where I don't think the fish are sitting out, then we see the pass. A little downstream, let the drift catch up with the line. Oops, got a little bow in there I want to get rid of. And then at this case, I like to do a series of smaller mends and keep the pressure off the float, off the drift, or the fly, and that'll give me a much, much softer drift down through here. And I'll just work my way through the run. One of the things to keep in mind is you'll see a nice long run and everybody tries to fish it all at once, and it doesn't work that well. you got to kind of break it down into small bites and fish it precisely. Especially when these fish are a little crabby like they are today, with this temperature drop on them. Yep, nope, that's just bottom. You do a little gentle soft strike. Often when you think it's the bottom, your indicator's sinking, just do a gentle check strike. Because you don't need to do a full on a full on strike because it could very well be the bottom. We are fishing egg flies and we gotta fish tight against the bottom. So when you think there might be, just do a check strike. If the bottom pulls back, set the hook. 
if the bottom doesn't pull back, you just salvage the drift and you can keep the fly on track and keep it down and stay fishing and cover a little bit more water. Now in this case, I'll fish this probably 10, 15 drifts, cover it, comb it, take two steps down and repeat as I work my way through the run. I want to be thorough and precise and just get as clean as a slow and soft as a drift as I can all the way through. All right, just want to go over really quick on the rods we're using and the setups they are. Like I said, we're fishing in the creeks, so we do fish a little shorter leader. Normally in the big rivers, I'm running about a 10, 12 foot leader, and here I'm running around eight feet, just because I want to have some fly line up past the rod tips to make the casting good. In this case right here, I got a 10 and a half foot six weight that I got set up as a little short range switch rod with about a uh, 25 foot um, head and tip total. I think I got a uh, OPS on Commando's um, Skagit on it, which makes it a lot of fun. And of course, a nice click drag reel. And it is a nice light rod. And in this case here too, we're running a um, our, one of our favorite indicators, which happens to be a Raven float. It's a one gram float, which works really nice in here. I did take a little lead off from the center pin guys and steal their floats. It's with the little um, rubber bushings going sliding up and down, it doesn't tear up our leaders. That's what I like about it. Easy to adjust, easy on our leaders. We can get around the knots. But it's basically um, the leader I'm taking a um, one of my normal leaders and just compressing it to uh, fit the water we're fishing. And I'm running eight pound 3x for a tippet egg fly probably about 24 inch um, tippet to the weight but this is basically um, kind of like my call my creek switch rod setup the other rod that um, we're using here you know what most of you have is a 10 foot 7 weight your favorite reel a uh, weight forward um, floating fly line and once again probably about an eight nine foot leader uh, in this case, we got a big old float on it because it's cold water and we're damn thing looks like a buoy. And we're working the slots and the cuts because of this cold weather conditions. We need to slow it down. So this, from leader on, it's really not much different than my little creek switch rod, um, other than the fact that you know standard reel like we all have, wait for the fly line. So really, a standard setup that we're using here. And I like 10 foot seven weights in the creeks. All right, quick little update. We've quit fishing the pools. We're kind of walking around the river a little bit. Our toes are cold, so we're just kind of wandering around, stalking to see what we can find. And taking a look at some of the little runs to see if there is any fish up in there that are active. So we're going to just kind of wander around a little bit and see what we can find. So we've quit the pools. We're going stalking. Just looking. Warm up. There we go. It is a nice fish. Yeah. You want to go right back there? Well, they're a little chilly. They take them a little bit to figure out. Should we give her a try of the net? I think she's ready. towards me a little bit. Send her on her way. Wasn't much of one. 
That was a nice fish. That was a really nice fish. Didn't fight much. Yeah, but she was so big. <laughs> yeah, really. When you're that porked. You can't do, you can't wiggle much, can you? Can't, can't do much. Well, folks, we're going to kind of shut it down. I mean, this weather's finally starting to change a little bit. But anyways, it's been cold. We've had a lot of frozen fingers, frozen toes, chili fish, crabby fish. Uh, it was, the last couple of days, it's been tough. We've had to basically break out the egg flies, slower drift down, just adapt to the fish. Much as we like to swing flies and show you swinging flies, it just wasn't happening, especially in these conditions, the way these fish were behaving. You know, we had to adjust to the fish. The fish never adjust to us. We have to adjust to them. But anyways, thanks for watching. I'll put a uh, link to the egg pattern fly tying video down below in the descriptions and, com uh, and comments so you can find that, that video and you can see the, see how we uh, tied the egg patterns that we used in the video. Also, we got more coming, so right down in here is that little, I always preach, that subscribe button. Hit that and the bell icon right next to it because we're going to have more coming. We're going to do a bunch of fly tying videos and some more fishing videos. So if there's anything you'd like to see fly tying, please put that in the comments. Uh, we would like to um, have some ideas for fly tying. We're going to be doing some um, gear videos. For an example, I keep threatening to show you how we set up our spay reels. We're going to be working. On, I kind of got that in the, in, on the back burner to do. So we have stuff like that coming. So once again, folks, thanks for watching. And until next time, see ya. This is Jay at JPEC Guides and Lost River Fishing. We are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you are interested in any of our islands or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.